on South End Pier today. I haven't got no bait with me. I'm just using some tiny little lures and I'm just gonna fish straight down the side of the pier. I don't care what I catch, anything really. Um, tiny little sabiki, so anything could take it. It's blowing a hoolie today. It's, look, my rods just fell over. It's really blowing. So I'm gonna persevere with this bad weather and I'm just gonna see what gives. Let's go. Right, I know it's I know it's not big, but it is at least something. I'm trying to ascertain what this tiny little fish is. Um, the trouble is when you start handling these tiny fish, you don't do them no favours. Right, there's no scutes on the belly. Oh sorry, there's no there's no kills on the belly, so I would assume that is a tiny herring. It's obviously undersized. That's definitely a tiny little herring. Right, I've had that one tiny herring and a bite. But the tide's really slackening off now. But, um, I mean, it wouldn't be normal for me to go fishing and not have some sort of mini disaster. My hat has just blown off, off of my head. I've had it for about 20 years. So uh, that's in the Thames Estuary somewhere. Never mind. That's another one of them tiny herring. But I ain't gonna touch this one. Because if I do, it'll probably die. So I'm gonna let it go without touching it. Well, I've caught about three of these little herring. The only trouble is every time I start filming, because they're so few and far between, I'm not capturing the, the take on, on camera. I'm getting little knocks all the time. And I have, on the reeling them up, I've lost a couple on the way up. I know they're not the biggest of fish, but it's something at least. That weren't the best session, but I wasn't expecting much anyway. Tide's turned now. It's, uh, it's too much flow. The water's all churned up, it's dirty colour. It's, it's just not conducive to fishing with lures, to tell you the truth. So, um, yeah, better luck next time. Today, I'm on the end of South End Pier. Just got one pack of ragworm, not really looking to fish on the bottom. I can't fish two lure rods at once, so I've got the hawk eyes on the smaller uh, smaller rod, baited up with, well, basically just little chunks of ragworm. And the other rod I'm using, I've got a carp rod today. Why not? It's, it's quite a stiff carp rod. I think it only cost me about three quid down the boat fare. Just gonna smash the life out of it with these feathers. Just gonna uh, just see what's down there. Hoping for some mackerel, really, something to take home and eat. Right, the first round I'm gonna be fishing with today is gonna be with these little sabikis. I mean, they're only tiny hooks, but I'm not expecting nothing massive. Maybe some, if I'm lucky, some mackerel. I don't think there's been that many about, so I've been told. But you never know. You got to be in it to win it. I had some herrings the other day, some tiny little ones, and there's probably gonna be some little schoolies under there. You just never know what's gonna turn up. Let's give it a go.
a bad start. Number two, nice mackerel. Well, let's hope there's more of them. Noticing a few feet below the surface, there's a lot of tiny fish, I don't know, four or five inches long, whatever. I'm not sure what they are, sand smelt, sand eels, God knows. Immature fish of other kinds, I haven't got a clue, but, um, They're not interested in any tiny um, sabikis. Well, I was wondering what them fish was, but I've, uh, I've scaled right down. And I've caught one. It's a sand smelt. First one I've ever caught. There must be loads of them down there. There's loads of these down there. Loads. <laughs> I've heard that they're quite nice to eat, like sprats. Don't think there's any size limit on them. Plus, the ones that I've been throwing back, they've not been going back that well. Floating off a couple of them, so I might take a couple of these home, just to give them a try. All I'm using is a size 16 hook to nylon, just tied on a loop on the braid with a two ounce lead, just dropping it below the surface and then they're ramming it down. Here, I'll show you. Don't have to wait long. Want a chuck? Well, not the most fantastic days fishing. One bass, one mackerel, and a shed load of sand smelt, which I'm going to take home. I'll be used for bait or eat. kitchen um, I ended up taking 12 of those sand smelts I mean they're adults they're not undersized fish it's just that people don't really generally make use of them I'm, I'm just going to give them a try I mean to, to, all, to all intents and purposes to me they look like sprats and um, I'm just going to fry them up like a sprat I'm just going to take the head off get the scales off gut them and just um, fry them and let's see what they taste like. They might be nice. I mean, some of them I was letting go and they was just drifting off dead. So, you know, they don't handle well. They don't handle being caught well anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, I took some. I, I, I bumped a lot off. A lot of them fell off the hook. 
Um, and I've uh, the first few that I caught, I threw back. But yeah, I've kept I've kept twelve. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I also caught this mackerel, just this one lone mackerel. And um, yeah, that's going to be me lunch. Mackerel and sand smelt. I mean, I know what the mackerel's going to taste like. That's going to be nice. But uh, as for the sand smelt, I haven't got a clue. I'll soon find out. Look at the scales coming off of them, look. Give me a quick wash. I'm just gonna gut these and cut the head off. So basically that's what we're left with. And I'm going to fry that up. I don't want to see what it's like. It's a decent little bit of meat there if you've got a few of them. You know, it's um, it's not the biggest fish in the world, but if you if you've got a handful of them, that's going to make a well, make a meal definitely. So there we have twelve gutted and beheaded sand smelt, and they've been scaled as well. Excuse the noise from the extractor fan, but um, I've got the oil going. I've heard Gordon Ramsay in the past saying that you should season the fish before you put it in the flour, so that's what I'm going to do. So that's half corn flour, half plain flour. So they've been well seasoned. So basically that's what we've got and I'm going to deep fry that. Here goes the first one, a tester. So they're, they're all in there now. I ain't going to lie, I had a bit of a disaster. The, uh, the SD card ran out on, on this GoPro and I couldn't find my other GoPro, so I've had to download all this stuff onto me onto my computer while this has all been cooked. And uh, I've been eating it, it's been nice, <laughs> but I've saved a few for the taste test for the camera. I mean, I know you're looking at that, you probably don't think that looks appetising, but believe me, it's tasty. Honestly, it really is. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I've got mayonnaise mixed with sriracha sauce. And that, that's, that makes a nice meal. I promise you, that is really tasty. Nice and firm, the fish. The coating's crunchy as well. I think that masks the fact that there are some little bones in there, but... When you eat white bait at a restaurant, that's what you're eating. I'm so surprised how tasty that is. That's really nice. I don't know why that ain't on the menu more often. I've eaten a lot worse. Believe me. I'm really, really surprised how nice these are. I would definitely eat them again. If you could get a dozen of them like I did. Brilliant for a starter. Wasn't sure about taking them. I mean, they're not undersized, they're adult fish. I'm not even sure if there is a minimum minimum land inside uh, an MLS for them. But it's surprising. You could easily make a meal out of those if you could catch them regularly. I'm loving these. If I can catch more of these, 
I'd eat them. I know they don't look appetising, but they taste really nice. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Really nice. Sand smelt. Most of you won't be bothered to catch them, I know. Most of you, most of you wouldn't be bothered about eating them. But I've just found out that they are, they're more than edible, they're actually really tasty. I don't know why these are not on the menu more often. Right, the last one. Bon Appetit. That's a winner. That really is. I'm so surprised they're nice out. Nice firm flesh. Very subtle, fishy taste. With a sauce. And the coating. Nice little crunch. That's lovely. Could have done with a little squeeze of lemon juice on them actually. I'll do that next time. But that surprised the hell out of me. Right, next up is the mackerel. I should have gutted this while I was at South End Pier, but um, I didn't, so I'm going to have to do it now. Right, so <clears throat> going to take the belly flap out where the bone's in it. That's the bit you don't really want. You're not getting rid of much meat on there. And then I'm going to notch out the bones along the lateral line. So that is another completely boneless fillet. Right, I haven't got much in the way of fresh herbs to put in amongst this, so I'm just going to season it up, put a little bit of chilli and a bit of garlic in it, a little bit of parsley. I would like to have done some other stuff, I, you know, some nice slices of lemons in there, but I ain't got none with me, but I'm just going to crack on with what i got. Phone from school. Let's give this a go. I'll film. Can if you want. Here it goes. That's <laughs> well nice, Max. What do you think? Mmm, that's really nice. Is it? Definitely taste the garlic. Got a bit of chilli. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Bit of parsley now. I've got to get that off because I know you won't eat it. Flat leaf parsley. Right, Fred. <laughs> Aeroplane. Mm. Nice. nice Tastes a bit like salmon. Um, well, it is an oily fish. nice very very nice look at that don't forget I took every bit of bone out of that <laughs> oh man I wish I could catch more mackerel for South End Pier one tiny bone texture of mackerel, the oiliness, 
the garlic, the butter, the chilli. Not sure the parsley makes any difference because I can't really taste it to tell you the truth, but it just makes it look a bit better, a little bit of colour there. But, um, <laughs> Look at that. Bread. Mm. That is so tasty. So tasty. That has got to be. One of the best tasting fish in the sea, I don't care what you say. <laughs> when it's um when it's freshly caught like that. It's so nice. So nice. Honestly, I'll rate that more than bass when it's cooked like that. That was super tasty. Right, if you're here now, at the end of this video, thank you for getting all the way to the end. I know some of these longer videos, people don't really watch them right to the very end because uh, they like shorter videos. There was a lot to cram into this one. That's why I made a longer video. I've got a few people to thank. I mean, it's no surprise that I went off of YouTube for a little while for various reasons, which I might explain at a later date. But at the moment, you don't want to hear all that. But I've got a few people to thank because I've been welcomed back with open arms. And there's a few other channels that have really done me some favours. First of all, uh, Billy Bantock from Fish O Shore Angling Videos. I mean, he's a diamond the geezer. He's the reason why I got back into shore fishing, really, after years and years. Of Thanks, Billy. Uh, thanks for spreading the word. Thanks to uh, Jay at Smash Fishing for giving me a mention in his video. Like, after that, my subscribers went up by a couple of hundred. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable, really. Like, I can't thank people like Jay enough, you know? Uh, people like Rob from the Cornish Shore and Kayak Fisherman, who put my channel on his recommended channels on his, on his page. He didn't have to do that. These people, they owe me no favours, but they, they really sort of, they've opened their arms to me and they've, they've done me some right favours. John Locker from the Fish Locker. Um... What the f John Locker from the Fish Locker, who uh, I've been chatting with lately. He's invited me to go down to him, and I can't turn that off or down. I've just got to find the right time between uh, working, looking after the kids, fishing, what have you. It's just a bit much, but I will get down there one day. And channels like Trodges Fishing, as soon as I was out there, like I come back out the second time round, they was there, like saying, where you been? Like, you know, supporting me. So it's brilliant. You know, these, these, these people, they... As I said before, they don't owe me no favours, but they've really sort of welcomed me back with open arms and like, I can't thank you guys enough, really, I can't. I'm not sure I've got enough subscribers yet for this to make a difference for a, a, a channel like um, Small Fry Productions. They've got more subscribers than me, but I'm just thinking I want to get them to the 1,000 subscriber mark. The videos are not the sort of videos you would watch if you're watching channels like mine, sea fishing channels and foraging channels and stuff like that. But the thing is, they've started branching out into sea fishing and they've started lure fishing for bass. And, you know, like, their, 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 their background lies in freshwater predators. And it's, they're brilliant. They're, they're, it's a right good channel. They, they catch loads of fish. They always produce the goods. The editing's good. And uh, they've started getting into sea fishing now. Uh, bass fishing from the shore with lures and plugs and that locally uh, around this way, you know, Essex. So they're, they're doing really well. And, I, and I'm just, if I could send a couple of subscribers their way, that's what I'm trying to do with this. Um, also, my good friend, uh, Damien Owens, the the... Uh, the fishing ninja, he's <laughs> he's a diamond. I met the bloke on YouTube. I've been fishing with him a couple of times. I'm going to Norway with him next year. Um, he's a diamond geezer, so like, there's another bloke I want to give a big shout out to. Uh, if there's anybody else I've forgotten, I'm sorry. I'll mention you in another video upcoming, maybe. And last but not least, thanks to all my new subscribers and old subscribers who are coming back to me. Thank you very much. Cheers. Much appreciated. Thank you.